Hello and welcome to r and I'm Phil. And I'm Jill. And together we are Phil and... Jill. <laughs> it is quite sad that even getting on for a year into the pandemic, that still, <laughs> that still tickles me. Um, <laughs> So as I say, welcome to r and uh, This is our Saturday morning uh, time to recommend films, uh, music and books. Uh, we haven't specified what r and stands for. Uh, we've got our own ideas, uh, but we leave it open uh, to you to decide. We've had a message from uh, Lorraine today who suggested that r and uh, could stand for Rave and Review. So um, we, we, we put that out there. Um, do feel free to send in your own suggestions for what R&R &R, uh, might stand for. So uh, today, I've lost my list, so today uh, Jill is going to be recommending a film to us. So what's your film for today, Jill? My film is Enola Holmes and you can watch this if you've got Netflix, I don't know where else you might find it. Um, anyway, it's a, f it's a fun, rollicking, swashbuckling, entertaining film um, and it, it, it's based on Enola Holmes and the film starts with Enola on her bicycle talking to camera um, explaining that her mother named her Enola which um, when spelt backwards is alone um, however she and her mother were always together um, and she says her mother is her whole world um, and the story is all about um, her discovering that her mother's gone missing on her 16th birthday. Now, Enola Holmes is Sherlock Holmes' uh, sister, and uh, she sets off to find her mother, becoming a super sleuth in her own right as she outwits Sherlock and unravels a dangerous conspiracy around a mysterious young lord, Lord Tewksbury. Um, so uh, she's extremely, this is what I the review that I've got, she's extremely intelligent, observant and insightful and she defies the social norms for women of the time. The film's set in 1884 um, and her mother Eudoria, played by Helena Bonham Carter, has taught her everything from chess to um, jutsitsu ju and encouraged her to be strong-willed, independent thinking young woman. Um, she, she can't do any embroidery, she can't do any of the normal things that young ladies of her time should be able to do, um, but she's up for being this sleuth detective and um, she's taught to listen, to fight uh, and to watch and the film sort of, I'm coming for you mother and off she goes to find her mother, the game is afoot. Anyway, it's great fun to watch and at one point her mother says to her, there are two paths, Enola, yours or the path that others choose for you. And um, it's all about her making her own decisions and um, going from being a sort of tomboy to dressing up as a lady uh, undercover. It's hilarious, it's funny, it's witty. Um, but there's also the deeper side of it, that it is about choosing your own way in life. And um, I found it really uplifting and just good fun to watch. There's there's not so many films that I've watched lately that are just good fun and Enola Holmes is just sheer fun and uh, very entertaining as well. So I would re recommend that to you all. Um, yeah, no spoilers, nothing like that. Just watch the film and enjoy it. Yeah, so I actually watched the film because um, my daughter is quite into mysteries uh, set in Victorian times. So I watched the film to um, to kind of vet it really to see if it was suitable. And there, there's one scene I wasn't sure about, but I decided that um, as it's a book, uh, it would probably be less scary in book form. Uh, oh. So I've got the book here that I can I can wave so you can visualise it um, yes. at home. Uh, but just to echo what Jill was saying, is it's great. It's great fun, um, and it's, it's it's got that kind of empowering sense about it. Um, and obviously there's the, the female empowerment is a big theme in there. But as, as a male watching it, I still found it empowering just that message of you are who you are and, and embrace that and own that. And 
don't let other people tell you who you should be. So and it's so silly and there's such different surprises that, that turn up, you know, at every corner sort of thing, you know, and it moves at a pace. You never you got no. time to be bored. Yeah. So. so that's Enola Holmes um, available on Netflix or to read. <laughs> um, yes, do check it out if that sounds like your kind of thing. So, Phil, you have chosen a song for us today. I have. Um, so my song is Englishman in New York by Sting and the Police. Um, so I'm going to read you um, a couple of um, a couple of words from it. Uh, I'm an alien. I'm a legal alien. I'm an Englishman in New York. If manners maketh man, as someone said, he's the hero of the day. It takes a man to suffer ignorance and smile. Be yourself no matter what they say. Oh, I'm an alien. I'm a legal alien. I'm an Englishman in New York. I'm disappointed that you didn't sing it, Phil. Well, I'm an alien. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially after what you were saying about... Um, don't cry little fish last week and the, the joy of singing that I, I refrained there uh, that's okay I'm, I'm keen that my joy in singing may not be translated into your pain and angst at my singing um, <laughs> but uh yeah this is a song uh by Sting and the Police and it's it's been around a while actually I think the first I first became aware of it hearing my parents listen to it um we had uh, this takes you back this we had mixtapes that we listened to in the car and I think this made it onto a few mixtapes on family uh, trips. Um, we, we always think I'm a Welshman in New York because we were Welsh but um, it doesn't flow quite as well uh, but it, it's, it's a nice gentle song it's not too uh, it's not too bouncy it's, it's something you can listen to in, in the background while you're getting on with something um, but I think the lyrics are quite good and quite thought-provoking um, yeah, I know I have a habit of claiming these secular songs that are clearly in no way uh, biblically based are exposition of different passages. Uh, but I'm continuing in that theme, um, it always makes me think of the passage in Philippians uh, that talks about how we are aliens and strangers uh, in a land and the importance to remember um, our heavenly citizenship, even though we live um, in, in the world. Um, so that image of the Englishman who feels a little bit out of place in New York because he prefers his tea um, and the kind of English way of doing manners is a little bit different to the American way of doing manners. Um, yeah, I just find it very reminiscent of what it, a good analogy for what it is to be a Christian living in a world that's... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's very floaty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I feel that I should have bought some biblical texts into Enola Holmes, but I'm, I'm afraid I haven't haven't done that. But um, yeah, it's it's a lovely jazzy sort of cool song to sing along to. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess we're all different as well, and the thing I'm becoming very aware of as we talk about songs is that for some people, like the rhythm and the tune of the song is what speaks to them and there's something about that that flow that speaks to the soul and is healing and for other people like myself it's actually the lyrics um, of a song that really speaks to them so there's something something magical about that that it, a song can communicate different things on different levels to different people yes yeah yes it's it yeah that's absolutely right and i think um you know, songs that really make it, they hit your emotions as well as, as well as your intellect. You know, there's everything about them that grabs you. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, are you ready for my book? I'm ready for your book. So my book, you can tell I'm being very intellectual, is The Velveteen Rabbit. Oh, look, mm -hmm. Phil's got, got a copy. <laughs> Does anybody know, can anybody guess where this coffee came from? <laughs> this, was my, um, this was my Christmas present from one of my favourite vicars in the world. <laughs> I'm a creep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, yeah, okay. It's also called Brackets, How Toys Become Real, um, a British children's book by Marjorie Williams. And if you 
did watch at all Book at Bedtime, you will have heard me reading this book. And oddly enough, I, I don't think I came across it when the girls were young enough for me to read it to them. It was later. It might even have been when I was at London Bible College um, that I came across it and loved it. I've always loved children's stories, always loved fairy stories. I've got a whole shelf of fairy stories somewhere, um, you know, that all sorts of different ones, some of them quite horrid. Um, but, you know, I was a little bit of an expert in fairy stories. But anyway, this Velveteen Rabbit, it's just a beautiful story. But the passage that really stands out is when um, the Velveteen Rabbit asks the boy, no, asks the skin horse, what, what is real? Um, so the story is, it's Christmas, the little boy gets a velveteen rabbit, that's a stuffed rabbit made out of velvet, and all the other toys, you know, they sort of think they're a bit superior, and velveteen rabbit gets forgotten a bit until one day nanny comes and um, she can't find any other toys, so she puts velveteen rabbit in with the boy. Um, but anyway, there's this skin horse, like a rocking horse, um, who's very wise in the nursery, and at some point, the Velveteen Rabbit has this conversation. So I'm just going to read it to you because I, this is the passage that I really love. What is real? asked the rabbit one day when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender before Nana came to tidy the room. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and a stick out handle? Real isn't how you're made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. <laughs> and I think this is the Christian endeavour. This is what, you know, being a Christian is all about. Um, well, it's not the only thing, but it's, it's about becoming more Christ-like and becoming more... Um, that person that God wanted you to be, which means, you know, you don't have to pretend. We don't have to pretend. And yet so often in our lives, we find we do do pretend, you know, you have to put on a face and be somebody that you're not. And really God, he doesn't call us to do that. He calls us to be who we are in him. And we're all different and we've all got different things to contribute. So I find it wonderfully uh, a great reminder and then I also love the bit that but by the time you come real you know you're all shabby and worn out and it's like oh yeah you're all squadgy and <laughs> um, you, you know that but it, it's more important to be real than it is to be perfect and that's that's the, the essence of it and, and I just love it and of course at the end of the story um, Velveteen Rabbit does become real and he goes off to play with the other rabbits so and there's a, a sort of element there of um eternal life you know life after death so it's quite a profound story but you know, it you, you could read it without putting anything into it at all really yeah, yeah but there is something quite magical isn't there about about these truths that we can make really complicated and I say this as a preacher now, we can turn into three bullet points that all begin with the same letter and yeah. but actually you strip it back and turn it into a story for children. It's just so powerful and, yeah. and so clear and so simple. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. 
So that's the Velveteen Rabbit. Uh, we, we always pop, pop up links to where you can buy these things, but I'll also uh, make sure we link to um, Book at Bedtime where uh, Jill is reading it so you can you can have it read to you. Um, <laughs> Oh, I, I, sorry, I completely forgot. I'm <laughs> I'm chairing this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just to remind you, we have been talking about in No Love Homes. Uh, we have been talking about The Velveteen Rabbit. And we've been talking about Englishmen in New York by Sting and the Police. Uh, so we'll be back next week at 10 o'clock. Uh, so it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from her. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>